Hey YouTube, so today we're going to be sharing our top five recall game changers for you and your dog. Now we know that recall can certainly be a challenge and that actually it's probably one of the biggest pain points that a lot of owners experience, whether that is their dog running over and taking someone's picnic, whether it's the fact that they want to go and jump up at people, whether it's just that they don't want to come home from the dog party, they're enjoying the dog party, they don't know why you've turned up to take them home, actually let them them be dogs and play. We're here to tell you that there is well and truly a game for that. And we've got, I suppose it's a few simple guidelines for a successful recall. Yeah, absolutely. So if you have not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Make sure to do so. There are so many useful videos in there that are gonna really help you wherever you are on your dog owning journey right now. So number one, top recall tip, and it is gonna be a good one. Your name is sacred. The dog's name is very, very, very sacred. So we have two of our dogs here. We're not gonna use their name in vain. We're not gonna use it when we don't want to use it. And you know the score. When people are in their house with their dog, they might be saying, Fido, don't do that. Fido, don't jump here. No, 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 off that, Fido. Seriously, Fido, get out of there. Can you get out of it? Fido, no. Seriously, away from the children, Fido, stop that, stop that. And so suddenly that name goes from being a name of this is amazing yeah. to actually, uh, well, white noise or maybe even worse, actually something they're actively avoiding and would quite like to run in the other direction yeah. from you. Now, both Tom and I see that both as a vet behaviorist and um, a, a dog trainer of, of thousands of dogs all over the world. And actually, this is something we know you can protect. So we play a game. We play a game and we play a game called the name game. Now, the interesting thing is, is I'm going to show you this game right now but I'm not going to use Bet's name because she has a very sacred recall word that few people are able to emulate. It sounds, it sounds very special. You're going to get to hear this special and, and you could use your dog's name or you could use a recall word like Tom is yeah. charging up. It really is your choice. And what I'm going to do is I've got her daily food allowance. So I'm going to throw a piece of food out. She's going to eat the piece of food. I know she's going to bounce back to me because I've got her daily food allowance. So just before she bounces back to me, I'm going to say the magic word that I want to build as this orient to me and charge back to me. So let's see what we get. Break. Bam. Hi. So the word that I'm using is P-A effectively. Um, and, and that is a word that for some reason I just started to use. And well, I thought, you know, what, I'm going to run with it. So I'll we'll show you that one again. Break. Pa. Nice. And pa. Yeah. Good girl. Pa. Yeah. And I'm doing it at that moment before she orients back. Pa. Yeah, clever. And what we're doing is we're creating that that spring back that there's a squirrel ahead of me and I hear that word and I spring back to my owner. We're setting up a situation in that she just practices doing that, hearing the word bouncing back, hearing the word bouncing back. And the more value we put into that bank account through the name game that we've just demonstrated that you can play with your eight week old or your eight year old dog, right? That is going to pay dividends out and about. It's going to pay dividends. I I hear you agreeing. So important that name is sacred. You protect that name, whether it's the recall name or whether this is your dog's general name, actually really, really protect it. This is something you want to supercharge up. It kind of has a two prong attack. attack. One, protect it and two, charge it. Yeah. So actually we don't want you ever finding that you've got a bit of white noise going on. We really want your dog to absolutely know this is cool. Okay, second one, second proximity. Hit is king not just a little bit it's it's king yeah. like it's important and the reason why that is and what we mean by proximity is your dog having value in being around you your dog having value in being close now the cool thing is is if we create proximity as, as she's demonstrating proximity is a high value area well really all the recall is is an invitation into a high value area it's that invitation to that party that you wanted to go to anyway and only recently i was working with an owner and i truly discovered exactly what that meant as actually he he did for sure have a great recall. The issue was he was leaving left, right and centre yeah. and you were having to call him back. And like I was this like, ping pong constantly. Actually, 
ping pong ain't fun. I want to walk and I want my dog to be around me. Well, tell, freedom, me if you, right? tell me if you c can agree with this and tell me if you are like, yeah, that's the position I'm in. I can get him back on a whistle or I can get him back if I try, but actually he's not hanging out with me. So proximity is king, it's hang out. So all I'm going to do, class, is actually just feed her for being close to my legs. Just literally dropping bits of food close to me, nothing major. Daily food all allowance. I'm doing is literally reinforcing with some of her daily food just for being close. Now, there's lots of other proximity games that we play um, throughout our academy, but actually, this is just a really simple one that actually you're still building proximity just for being close. Now, it's not something that's gonna look super fast. It's not something that's gonna look like darting around and whizzing around your legs. It's actually just, I'm feeding you close to my legs. If you thought about it as a scatter graph, the scatter, all of the X's would be here and they wouldn't be out there. And you can imagine when you're out walking and that little squirrel, pesky squirrel pops along, he's out in the distance. We want the proximity power or potential power to be in this zone. So with that, you're gonna start this at home. It might be in your living room where we are. It might be in your garden. It might be just outside your house. This is just how our living you're, room looks. Yeah, exactly. You're just paying that, that daily food allowance into staying close and being close. Now the third game changer that we've got for you is that amazing, game middle. Now the thing about middle is that it's all about your dog coming in close and actually standing between and your legs. It is a lifesaver. So it really is a huge life-saving. It's like a trick of the trade. Yeah. And for me, it's not just saved my own dogs. It's actually saved thousands of dogs all over the world from recall struggles and Absolutely. potential lack of freedom. This is a game you need to play and know. So how does this look? Well, let's have a little play break. We are going to say the magic word middle. Nice. We might throw out middle. Nice. We might throw out middle. Nice. And what we've got is a dog that we can really easily capture. You know, we're not having to fight them for this. They actively want to be there. As you can see, um, they actively offer it. And it's their invitation for proximity. It's their invitation to stay close. Now you're probably thinking, how do I play that game? How do I get that in my life? I want it. Well, we've created a step-by-step -step video for you. It's in the YouTube channel going through the step-by-step really sequence of games that we play to create that finished picture of being able to recall your dog off a squirrel into middle and you can check that out on the YouTube channel. Okay, our next tip. It's super cool, it's super king, it's very important and that is a collar grab. What we're looking for with the collar grab, our dog's wearing a collar, sparkly is optional and actually all we're doing is we're going to handle that collar and we're going to feed our dog. So I'm going to handle the collar and feed my dog so that actually what I really don't want whether you're um, working with a young dog, an older dog, a puppy, we don't ever want them to become collar shy. Class come, good. So we want them to actively want to almost have you around their collar and around their neck. Now Classy is a dog who's quite shy and can be a little retiring at times. Actually, this is a game that you can see, there is no worry about us handling that collar or grabbing that collar. The important bit is that you take it step by step. So for your dog, it might initially be a tiny touch or even just a go towards. So you actually might do something that is going towards that collar, but isn't necessarily asking her to do anything with it. Equally, you can build it to the point that you can actively really handle that collar and manoeuvre by that collar and that actually at no point is it a bad deal for Classy. And that's the important part. Having your collar grabbed is basically a good deal. And I remember being on walks, I remember being much younger and having a dog called Bella and Bella would literally see that lead come out and you may have experienced this with your dog. She'd see that lead come out and she'd go and hide under the park bench like, no, no, no. And then what she'd do, and you might have had the same experience, she'd kind of be there and you'd be here and you'd be doing this and she'd be going, no, no, no. She wasn't running away. She didn't want to go home. It was a bad deal. She could sense it was a bad deal. The game collar grab just exactly what we've just shown you here, that would have been a lifesaver for her. And instead, we had to play many different tricks uh, on our walk, and most of them ended in us sitting and waiting in the park bench until she came near us, some of them taking up to an hour. So what we're trying to do is save you loads and loads and loads of time and kind of hack into all of the secrets and tricks of the trade that we've learnt. Okay, so. The fifth 
and final tip that we have for you today is that we know we know how kind of scary it can seem, how kind of um, tricky it how can be. How daunting it can be, right? To, you've got, I don't know, you've played the games that we've shown you at home. You're getting great results there. You're really happy with how things are looking. You're getting great results on lead, on your walks. You're seeing that your dog's wanting to hang out. They're doing middle. They're responding to their name but you're a bit scared to take that lead off. And be honest, have you been in that position? Because Tom and I work with handlers all the time, dog owners, clients all the time, that actually really desperately want to have off-leash freedom and are yeah. just petrified to let their dogs off-lead. Now, this is a long line. Oh my the word. cool thing is, and it is a long line, <laughs> that is a the long cool line. thing is that actually it's a material that you can leave. It's, it's a great yeah. material, so you can leave it in the wet and in the grass. It doesn't get smelly or horrid. It doesn't get or heavy because it's absorbing the water. It's also a cool colour. Um, and the yeah. cool thing with this long line opportunity is that actually don't be afraid to use a long line to enable you to have more freedom than they would have. And at the same time, you can still get rid of this later. A lot of people are scared to use long lines we find that they could be very useful in training like this to allow you the confidence where you can actually just let go of your lead and not be so panicky about it so you're not finding yourself kind of like clasping onto the lead actually we can just kind of put it down and let it go and actually we've still got the opportunity to be able to um, sort of step on it later now just a quick note on stepping on it I would always pop my dog in a harness if I'm gonna step on that line at any point just to make sure that there's no opportunity for sort of any sort of jerking or whiplash or sort of injury yeah. so I've and got that opportunity to be able to stand on it and really important that we don't step on it as a way of training the recall or as a punisher what we're doing is if our dog you know if we see that uh, I don't know an owner and dog uh, the, the dog's ignoring them the dog's getting into trouble maybe the dog's going to put themselves in danger that would be a situation in which we ask the owner to put their foot on the long line to stop that from progressing any further it is not a training tool and it is always attached to a harness this is about your freedom and you building up your and confidence when you're building up your confidence that's there for you to be able to pick up at any point the other thing and this is a really top long line trick and this is something i've done i've owned border collies nearly all my life and it's something i've often done with border collies because they're such a fast like quick pairing breed they pair things very very fast so end of walk lead uh, lead end of walk and um, and so for my border collies one thing i've always done when they're younger is if i do have a long line on them i do lots and lots and lots of recalls and when I actually want to take them home, I just gently pick up the line and walk home. What I don't do is recall them, then pick up the line and then go home. So actually the recall doesn't pair with going home when you have a very, very high energetic dog, just like Bet, who kind of wants to stay out all day long. So actually that's just one of my little tricks of the long line, but long lines can have lots and lots yeah. and lots of cool uses. The key is that you want to make sure they're waterproof, that they're not going to absorb the water, that they're lightweight. And of course that they're a pretty color. We found them very difficult to, um, to to find in those criteria so we made them and um, you can get them at the absolute dog store absolute-dogs.com and you can pick your color and, and we'll send them right to you the key is guys that this is about your confidence this is about your freedom this is about enabling you to be the very best trainer of your dog your dog could ever wish for so those are our top five five recall tips there are huge amounts of things we can do and at the same time this is bite-sized this is what you can do for an immediate win all of these things are going to supercharge your recall whether it is your number one your name is sacred literally play the name game number two proximity is king it's potential power actually look after it and pay it well number three it's middle it's middle because it's that opportunity to capture your dog but actually your dog is driving the learning they love it they want to be close number four or then the, the next step is that we might need to get hold of their collar or harness to put them back on lead. Actively, let's put value in that and teach them that as a great experience. And number five, the long line about your confidence and your freedom. That was this episode of Absolute Dogs TV. Go forth, take action, play the game, see the real life results. Remember, game changers, whatever the dog owning struggle, there's a game for that. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe to our channel. And check out our new 25-day online dog training challenge. Watch the videos, play the games, transform your dog owning struggles. As a loyal YouTube subscriber, you can get a 70% discount through the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the number one most transformational dog training podcast on iTunes and Spotify, the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast. And remember to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more live teaching, video content and free training using the links in the description. Yeah. <laughs>